Hi, and thanks so much for joining with us today. My name's Tim. I'm one of the pastors here at Grace Church Milton Keynes. It's a great honour to be speaking to you and sharing from God's words. Uh, we're going to be getting up and running today, looking at the New Testament letter of Philippians. We're going to work our way through this letter each time I preach over the next several Sundays. So let me encourage you, find a Bible or Google Philippians and have it open before you as we look through the first few verses today. Kids, you've done a great job in recent weeks making posters and decorating them. Want you to grab pens and paper again and get ready for today's phrase to make into a poster for your family home to act as that reminder and that encouragement throughout the week. Let's pray before we begin. Jesus, I want to pray for everyone listening today. Lord, would we hear from your word? I pray for myself. I pray Holy Spirit. Even now, as I preach these words, come and equip me and anoint me to share something of your truth and your goodness that will bless people. And God, we pray for lives changed, even today. Come transform us, come work in us, we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, the background to this letter, uh, this letter is one of the New Testament books in the Bible. And Paul, who writes this letter, he's in lockdown. He's in prison. He's waiting possible execution. Many of us uh, have been in lockdown for nearly five weeks. Paul could have been in prison for getting on for five years by this point. But instead of being depressed or frustrated, we hear from him of great joy and thankfulness. Even in this state of extreme lockdown, Paul's able to write this letter to encourage and teach this church in the city of Philippi. And we'll see that this church family is one he knows well and one he loves dearly. This church also, they're experiencing crisis. They're suffering trials and difficulties of different types. Not so much COVID-19, but they're enduring persecution and threats and difficulty both within and from outside of the church. And so right at the start of this letter, Paul addresses each member of this church using a title for each one of them that reminds them in the midst of lockdown, in the midst of hardship, it reminds them of who they really are. So let's read the first two verses first of all together. So this is Philippians chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says to all the saints who are in Christ Jesus at Philippi. Paul's not talking here to a few special people. He's reminding every Christian reading this letter, and that includes now me and you, he's reminding us of who we really are. Sam, my wife, works in intensive care in Bedford Hospital. And whereas a couple of months ago, if they were treating an infectious patient, they put PPE on just for that room that the patient was in. Now the whole ward has become a red zone and they have special donning and doffing areas for when they go on and off the ward. And as they leave the ward, they take off their multiple layers of gloves and their aprons and their gowns and their masks and head coverings. And, and they walk out then into the safe area, the clean area. The old, the unclean is left behind. I think it's probably actually incinerated and completely gone. And the old's left behind and you've now come out from, you're now separated out from that red zone. You're now in the fresh, clean air. Well, the title Saints speaks of being set apart. It speaks of this separated outness. It's a reminder that the old is gone. It's left behind and the new has come. And this is not because anything you and I have done. But saints, Paul said, it's saints in Christ Jesus. Saints are those in Christ Jesus. We don't earn sainthood as an accolade. We can't achieve having been made right with God, try as we might. 
We can't get ourselves out of the red zone, actually. It's Jesus who makes this possible. It's only as we are in him, only through his death and resurrection and all he's done, that our old is taken away and dealt with fully and we're made new. Grace Church, I want to check in with you today. Are you remembering that you're a saint? Are you calling to mind all that Jesus has done for you? That he's forgiven you, that he's washed you clean, that the old, our sin and our shame, he's taken it away. Kids, that's actually our poster phrase for today. I want you to write, remember you're a saint. I want you to write, remember you're a saint for all your family to see over this next week. Decorate it, make it beautiful of all sorts of colours and then come and show it to us in the Zoom chat later on. Well, regardless of being locked down, regardless of chains, regardless of persecution and trials of many kinds, Grace Church, we're saints. You are a saint. This being made new, this free gift from Jesus It's called grace and this brings peace. Did you notice when Paul says grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, it's not a nice Christian greeting that Paul's saying there. This isn't Christianese fluff. Grace and peace are given to you in Jesus. They're made possible only from the Father and only through the Son. Let me say to you today, especially if you wouldn't be able to truly know that title saint, you wouldn't be able to really know that that word saint can, yes, outrageously, yes, undeservedly, but truly be applied to you. If you don't personally know Jesus and you're listening in today, grace is offered to you freely. Peace is possible for you. Peace even in lockdown. Peace even like Paul was on death row, even in the midst of our trials and hardships, you can be, we can be at peace with God. We can go from strangers, even enemies, to friends. I want to urge you and invite you to receive for yourself the grace and peace of God. At the end of my talk, in a little while's time, I'm going to give a really clear moment where you can do that. You can take that step out from the red zone and into his life and into his goodness that he's got for you. Let's get into the next six verses of this letter from Paul to the church in Philippi. We're picking up from verse three, reading through to the end of verse eight, where Paul continues to write this letter. And he says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Paul says, it's right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart. For whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. Wow, amazing words Paul starts this letter with. Three simple things I want us to take hold of from these verses today. Firstly, we're called to be a loving family. We're called to be a loving family. Did you hear the deep love shown by Paul to this church in Philippi? Phrases like, I thank God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I pray with joy. He says, I have you, I hold you in my heart. God can testify how I long for you. I yearn for you, other translations say, with the affection of Christ Jesus. Grace Church, I want you to remember today, you are loved, you're missed, you're cared for. We have family right at the heart of who we're seeking to be, who we are in our church. And you know, we're not just a collection of people who happen to sing the same songs at each other roughly at the same time in the morning. 
No, we have deep care and affection for each other. We're committed to one another. We carry one another in our hearts. And that's not to say everyone is everyone's best friend or we don't find relationship in our church family hard sometimes. We'll see actually later in Philippians, there's bickering, there's infighting at points. But we see a clue here in what Paul says as to how we love one another, how we grow in this love and affection for one another. It's Jesus' love towards us that causes this love to then flow out from us. Paul says we love with the affection of Christ Jesus. It's his love we love others with. If you're finding it hard to love others in your church family sometimes, well, we don't try harder, we receive more of God's love, which then enables us to love others more. We call this loving God, loving people, and loving life. And Paul gives us a snapshot into what that looks like with these words he uses. It's a beautiful picture he paints of what we're called to be as family. And so, Grace Church, let's be thankful for one another. Maybe we're being helped to really appreciate one another even more in this season of separation. Paul knows joy in his heart as he remembers and prays for his church family. Let's know joy in our heart as we think of one another and pray for one another let's remember we're partners i love that word paul uses partners speaks of being mutually dependent on one another working together how we need each other let's show affection and love for one another acts chapter 16 the new testament book of acts chapter 16 tells the story actually of paul first taking the gospel to the city of philippi and It tells the story of Paul starting this church, which we're now reading him right to. And we hear of a lady by the name of Lydia who's saved. She puts her trust in Jesus and she then opens up her home to Paul and his friends who are there in that city. And so these guys, they stay with Lydia. They've uh, eaten at her table. Paul has spent considerable time with Lydia and they've done life together. And so this, as Paul writes, this isn't theory for Paul. It's real. And so as he pens this letter, he's thinking of Lydia. He's thinking of the jailer. He's thinking of the slave girl. We also can read about in Acts 16 in Philippi. He's thinking of good friends and family. Grace Church, the same is true for us. This family thing is real. We can give thanks for one another. We can remember one another with joy. We can know that we're loved. You can know you're cared for. We can reach out to one another and show that love, show that care and affection. Here's a challenge for all of us. Ask God to remind you of someone in your GC family who you've not spoken to. Maybe you've not seen them in one of our midweek hangouts or you've not seen them on a Sunday morning Zoom chat. Think of your church family. Allow God to guide you to someone maybe you haven't connected with over these last few weeks and reach out, get in touch, show that love and that care to someone you're prompted to. This Philippian church, as they read this letter, they must have been so blessed. They must have been so encouraged to hear of Paul's deep affection for them. The same is going to be true for your Grace Church family members as you reach out to them. See if you can take that challenge this week. Secondly, as we read these verses, we see we're called to persevere in prayer. Persevere in prayer. Stuck in prison, Paul couldn't reach the Philippians, but God could. You get the sense here, don't you, that Paul is praying a lot. He says, in all my prayers for you. We're feeling cut off from each other feeling cut off from people we love. Paul knew what that felt like and he trusted the Philippians to God. He asked God to do what he couldn't. I want to encourage us, Grace Church, to persevere and continue in prayer, to take extra time to rest in God's presence, to enjoy him, to cry out to him for this world, to 
call out to God for each other. Maybe to pray for some of the nations we're connected to overseas. Maybe to pray for our friends in Liberia who they desperately need our prayers right now. Many people in that country who might just about normally earn enough money each day to buy some food for their family. Well, now they're in lockdown. They're in real danger of starvation. And we can't reach them. We are, we are going to try and send some money to support them. But where we can't reach them, God still can. God can still get to them. Closer to home. Let's pray for our neighbours. We, uh, as a family, we're doing tiny acts of kindness to reach our neighbours near us, around us on our street. And that's great. But let's not forget to pray, to soak our streets in prayer. One of the big thrusts of these opening verses in this passage from Paul is to remind us it's God who's sovereign. He begins the good work in us. It's not us. We can't do it. We can't make people saints. But God can. Only God can. It's his sovereign work. Read about Lydia in Acts 16. It says it was the Lord who opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. It's the Lord who opens people's hearts. So let's pray. Let's pray for friends who've never before shown any interest in God to open up. Let's pray for family members. Let's pray for work colleagues, for an opening up of their hearts to the gospel. I'm praying lots that we would grow in this season, that we would go deeper into our awareness of God. and We would go deeper in our intimacy with Jesus. So church, we're praying for you. God can reach you. Caleb who's my youngest child, you'll see him in the video in a moment. He's three, he loves going on my back and then he loves being the one who steers me. He grabs me by the shoulders and he moves me one way or the other and he steers me around the house. Prayer allows us to be steered by God. He steers our hearts, he steers our passions and affections. calls us and steers us to pray in line with his plans and purposes. Charles Spurgeon said, true prayer is neither a mere mental exercise or a vocal performance. It's far deeper than that. It is a spiritual transaction with the creator of of heaven and of earth. It's a spiritual transaction with the creator of heaven and of earth. Grace Church, let's keep praying. Let's press into the privilege and the power that's found in that spiritual transaction that we get to have, we can have with the creator of heaven and earth. Thirdly, thirdly, remember God's not a quitter. We're to persevere in prayer. We're to reach out to one another and be a loving family. But we're also to remember God is not a quitter. Verse 6 says, it's a famous verse. I'm sure of this. I'm confident of this, Paul says. He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. He who began a good work in you, he will carry it on to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. Church, God's work in you is not on pause. God's not on furlough. He hasn't been thwarted or delayed or frustrated. He will. He is carrying on his good work to completion. I think we can understand this verse in two ways. Firstly, when you think of our salvation, God will not let you go. He saved you. He's plucked us out of the red zone and he's bringing you, he's bringing us all the way through to that day that we meet him face to face. Secondly, I think it's right to think of our discipleship too, our our sanctification, our becoming more and more like Jesus. God is committed to keep working on us, to keep working in us. His heart is to craft us, shape us, stretch us and grow us. 
God looks at you with a good plan in his heart. He has great ambition as he looks at you. He's not lazy. He's not too busy. He doesn't add you to his to-do list for a rainy day. He's actively engaged right now. Today, he's carrying on his good work. Welcome out into our garden. Last October, this bit you can see behind Caleb and I, uh, it was all yes, decking. Yes, and we're doing trick shots, as he warming. Yeah, we're doing trick shots, lots in this area. It was decking, but it was all broken. It was all rotten and dangerous. And so we pulled it all up and we dug it out and we had a big bonfire. We nearly burnt down the conservatory. Um, but then we laid, as you can see, laid some turf. And I learned some things about turf. I'm not very good as a gardener, but I learned some things. Firstly, you need to break up the hard ground. Secondly, turf needs to go down when it's warm, when the ground is warm. The warmth of the earth helps the roots go down deep, helps the turf, helps the roots get established. And thirdly, the turf needs water. It needs to be soaked again and again to help it establish, to help it grow. Well, you know, God, having got rid of the old and rotten and broken in us, he wants us to grow. He wants to soften us up and warm us up from the inside. He wants to soak us again and again with his spirit. And he takes time with us. He's patient with us. He's not content for us to stay stuck or become all dry and shriveled up. He wants us to grow. He wants life. He wants fruitfulness and maturity. He wants us to be established with deep roots in him. So let's be open, church, to him who began a good work in us. Let's allow him to carry on to completion. Let's allow the spirit to water us. Let's allow time in God's presence and in his word to warm us, to soften us, to break up our heart hearts. Think of God as the master gardener wanting to carry on his work in your life. He's got great landscaping plans for you. He wants to grow something that's beautiful for the display of his glory. He's not afraid of some hard work. He's not afraid of getting mud under his fingernails. So let's uh, pray together now as we close. There are a couple of responses I want to lead us in today. So let's come and respond. Let's still our hearts right now. Let's allow God to speak to each of us and to do his work in us. Wherever you are right now, know God's with you. God's helping you respond to him. First of all, I want to give a really clear moment for people to come and give their lives to Jesus, to be made new, to be pulled out of the red zone and into his life. Has God's good work begun in you yet? Today it can. Today your whole life, your whole eternity can be turned right round. Perhaps the Lord is reaching out to you like he did with Lydia and he's opening up your heart. Let me urge you, like Lydia did, to respond to the message. Respond to Jesus today. You can pray a simple prayer with me right now to do that. Let's pray these words together if we're wanting to respond to Jesus. Lord Jesus, I respond to you right now. Lord God, I say yes to your offer of life. I say yes to your forgiveness. I say yes to friendship with you. Jesus, I commit my life to you right now. Take me out of the red zone, Lord. Bring me into your loving family. Fill me right now, I pray, with your love and your presence. Come into my life, Lord, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, we want to invite you to do three quick things. First of all, click the response button. I think it's that way on the chat as a really concrete way. You can take a step to say yes to Jesus. Secondly, we want to ask you to get in touch. The response buttons in our chat are anonymous, which is great. It gives people privacy. But our heart is to help people who are first stepping out on their journey with Christ. So if you're responding 
please let us know. Let us know in the live prayer right now or through emailing in. And third step is one invited to consider Alpha. If you're responding or if you thought about responding, we want to say Alpha is perfect for you. We're doing an online course. It's starting pretty soon. So get yourself on that as it would be just fantastic for you to find out more there. For all of us, let's, let's take some moments to respond. Let's remember God's not a quitter. He's still working. We pray right now across this city, even across the nations. I pray right now. Holy Spirit, would you come? Let's receive church for a moment. Holy Spirit, soak in again and again. Soak into us. Come and refresh. Come and cause us to be deeply rooted in you. Allow us to grow deep roots right now, Lord, we pray. Break up the hard bits. God, you see beneath the surface, Lord, come and warm us up and break up the bits that, uh, to allow more of you to flood in. Let us, Lord, I pray, let us really grow in this season. Carry on your work in our lives. Thank you. You're not on pause. You don't quit. Carry on your work, I pray, in us. Let us live in the reality, Lord, of who we now are as saints in your kingdom and keep doing your work in us, I pray. Let us persevere in prayer. Help us reach out and love one another and let us see your kingdom expand out into the city and across the world, we pray. Thank you for speaking to us today. Keep working in us throughout this week, we ask, Lord God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. May God bless you.